First off, I wanna make sure you look at those last few questions from yesterday's homework. As you are looking at those, remember as I'm looking at your work and checking this, I should see for number seven, two ways that you solve this. You cannot just come up with the answer. You must have shown me the Pythagorean theorem, which shows leg squared plus the other leg squared, which is four, is gonna be equal to seven squared. When you go to solve for y, you're gonna have y squared, which is a leg, plus four squared, which is the other leg, is equal to the longest side, the hypotenuse, which is 21 squared. Then you're gonna show your work by subtracting and finding the square roots. As you take a look at today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at explaining why the Pythagorean theorem works. We're gonna look at finding an unknown side again in our missing triangle. So we're gonna watch this video. As you watch it, we wanna think, what are the different ways that they prove this theorem? As you watch this, they're gonna show you three or four, but there are hundreds. Um, you go do a Google search and you're gonna see a ton of them. The other thing is if we're looking at what is a Pythagorean theorem. So as we watch this video, you are gonna see both of these answers in the video. So as you look at this, here's the video. With the geometry came from the Pythagorean theorem. In any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. In other words, the sum of the areas of the two small blue squares is equal to the area of the large square. Here's how the Chinese proved this theorem. Make four copies of the original triangle. Put this here for reference. Now slide the triangles around and keep track of the areas of the blue regions. And we see that A squared plus B squared is always equal to C squared. When all three sides of a right triangle are in... The last part is what we did the first day when we fit, showed that the squares fit in. They're said to form a Pythagorean triple. Here's one with 3, 4, and 5. And 5, 12, and 13. Another one with 8, 15, and 17. And there are infinitely many more. Pythagorean triples were known long before the time of Pythagoras. This Babylonian clay tablet, written around 1700 BC, contains 15 examples of Pythagorean triples, some of the numbers being quite large. No one knows why the Babylonians were interested in these triples, and as far as we can tell, they did not know the general form of the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem appears in Euclid's Elements in Book 1 as Proposition 47. This Arabic diagram shows Euclid's proof. It can be simplified with computer animation. Drop a perpendicular from the right angle to the hypotenuse. Another way of proving. A large square into two rectangles. Euclid's idea was to show that this square and this rectangle have equal areas, and this square and this rectangle have equal areas. Animation shows why. All parallelograms with the same base and altitude have equal areas. So all these parallelograms have equal areas, as do all these. And that's all there is to it. So we see that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. Still not absolutely convinced? Make a copy of the small square. And the Here's another way. Square. Make cuts along the sides and out to the edges and rearrange the pieces. All the pieces from the big square fit exactly inside the other two squares. So, in this video, how many different ways did they prove the theorem? Three to four, I would say, different ways. They cut it apart, they showed the parallelograms, they found the areas. What is the Pythagorean triple? It said it has to be all integers. So, keeping in mind, integers. And in this case, it's going to have to be positive numbers that make this true. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They said the first Pythagorean triple was with sides 3, 4, and 5. They showed one more. They said 5, 12, and 13. 25, they put square in it, plus 144 equals 169. And then they also gave some more. Remember they said there was quite a few? And then it would be any multiple of this, okay? So when I think of a multiple of three, four, and five, I could take each of the numbers here times three. 
So I would have 9, 12, and 3 times 5 would give me 15. And that would be another triple as you look at that. So here is a situation, and I want you to pause and read through this. And as you pause it and then um, read through, I would just want you to make a guess at what your answer is. Okay? So you're going to, so hopefully you've read through and you just made a guess at your answer. How? Suppose that you add one foot to the string, okay, that was 120, if we are looking at that. Keeping in mind that this 120 feet or yards here, 120 yards, is actually equal to 360 feet, right? Taking our yards times three gives us how many feet. And as we're looking at that, what we know is that, so this is 180 feet and this is 180 feet on our football field. So at the 50 yard line, we're going to hold this up. What do you think? Make sure everyone has an answer. Check with your shoulder partner. And then we are going to continue. So we're going to go through a little more vocabulary. A right triangle, as we said earlier, is a triangle with one right angle. In a right triangle, the sides that come off the angle, those are called our legs of our right triangle. In a right triangle, the opposite, the side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And it is always, always, always the longest side. Always the longest side. So whenever I look at my hypotenuse, that is going to be my longest side. Pythagorean theorem is a pattern that is only true for right triangle. It is not true for any other type of triangle. And it relates the lengths of the three sides to the areas of the square. So that's why in the first lesson, we were always drawing those squares coming off and saying that our area of each square. So thinking about how we did that with our areas coming off each side. This one has an area of 25, five squared, an area of nine, and the area of 16. So 9 plus 16 does equal 25. Now, as we take a look at this problem and this next problem, what we want to take a look at is if we are looking at this problem and it says to find the leg, the length of the hypotenuse in a right triangle that has a 15 inch leg and a 20 inch leg. So the first thing I always want you to think of doing is draw a picture. So we want to draw a right triangle. It doesn't matter how you draw your right triangle. And mine's not perfect. Hopefully maybe yours is a little better. I could draw it this way or I could draw it this way. You can draw that right triangle anyway. But the key thing is we want a 15 inch leg. So we have 15 inches over here. And this is our 20 inch leg, which means we are trying to find C. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is we're going to start with always putting the formula. Those of you that don't like writing it, do it anyway. A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Because many of you will make mistakes in this first step as the problems get a little more difficult. We're going to think of a, and it doesn't matter if we want to think of it as 15 squared or the 20 squared, and you could switch these around, is going to be equal to c squared. The next thing, you know your perfect square, so 15 squared is 225, plus 20 squared is 400. That equals c squared. Now at this point, Many times you're going to see me do it like this. I'm going to put the C squared first, and that is going to equal, I'm going to add the two together, 625. How do we get rid of taking the square? We take the square root. C is going to be equal to the square root of 625, which the square root of 625 is not one you had to have memorized. We would say that that is 25 inches. Does it make sense that it is the longest side? Yes, 25 has to be the side longest across from the right angle. As you continue, the next problem on the next page says, this time you have a right triangle and the hypotenuse is 15 centimeters and the leg is five. So again, draw a right triangle. Again, they don't have to be perfect. Straight lines are best with a hypotenuse of 15. So I'm going to go around and put my A, B, C on my triangle. 
oh, C, hypotenuse, is 15 centimeters. One of the legs, does it matter which one? Nope, I'm going to call B my 5 centimeters. Could you have called it A? You could have. As we look at that, A squared plus B squared, write the formula, equals C squared. We're going to start A squared, we don't know, plus 5 squared is equal to 15 squared. So again, A squared plus 25 is going to be equal to 225. How do we get A squared by itself? Solving equations from last year when you were doing solving basic equations, we got to subtract 25 from both sides of the equal sign. Now, some of you will just take it away from the 225. You must do it on both sides. A squared is going to be equal to 200. Now, the problem with 200 is it is not one of our perfect squares. So what do we say A is equal to? We're going to say the square root of 200, and it is in centimeters. And then if we are looking at our final answer for this, we are going to say approximately, and we're going to use our calculator. So we're going to leave it like this is the exact length, which means it is irrational. And then we approximate it to say that it is approximately 14.1. We want to think, does this make sense that 15 is the longest side? And yes. So if we look at this problem, we could definitely say that 14.1 makes sense because the longest side was supposed to be 15. What I would like you to do right now is I am going to start out on question number this, this second problem. I want you guys to do the first problem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to start each of them with the same formula. What I want you to do right now is fill in these numbers for A and B and show your work. And then I'm going to have you pause the video. And you're going to see how I've substituted in for this next one. And then you guys will check to see how you did. So now as you are looking at finishing this first one, so you should have put 7.5 in your calculator and got this answer. You probably knew your 18 squared. You added them. To find C, you undo squaring, which means you take the square root, and our approximate answer is 19.5, and in this case, we'd put inches. Does it make sense? Yes, this is supposed to be, 19.5 is supposed to be the longest side, and it is. Here, our longest side is 16. So again, you start with your formula. You cannot take 8 minus 16. You must square it first, so we get 64. Now we subtract 64 on both sides of the equal sign so that a squared is going to be equal to 192, not one of our perfect squares. So the answer for a is an irrational number, the square root of 192 meters. We say that a is approximately equal to 13.8 meters. Does that make sense? For the two other sides. Yes, it needs to be shorter than 16, and in this case, 13.8 meters. In the last situation that you are looking at for our examples, I started it with 9 squared plus b squared. Again, you cannot take 9 minus 15. You must square them first, so that now I subtract 81. Now, this video is also going to be posted, so if you did not get all the notes while you're in class today, you can go back and watch the video over. So if b squared equals 144, oh, I'm recognizing a perfect square, the square root of 144, we finally have a rational answer for our side, and in this one, it happens to be 12 feet. Okay? So as you're doing these, pause it if you need to so that everyone has this written down for their examples. And we are now going back to that problem. So information that we knew, this was 180 feet. And we knew that we're trying to figure out how high up it is. But what we know about this is that we added that one foot, which means this is going to be 180.5 feet. So when you think about this right triangle, draw this right triangle. These two lengths are really close, 180 feet and 180.5 feet. 
So we could think of this as being our A, this is being B, and this is being our side C. So if we are solving this, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, how high can we lift it up? We're going to go A squared plus, we're going to use our calculators for this, 180 squared equals 180.5 squared. When you do that, A squared plus, so use your calculators, you get a pretty big number, 32,400 equals 32,580.25 when we put this in our calculator. We're going to subtract the 32,400. It's pretty big numbers we're looking at. And as we do that, once we do that subtraction, we're going to see a squared is actually going to be equal to 180.25, which means a is going to be approximately 13.4 feet. And if we are looking at that answer, which one, go back to the original, could we do? It should be answer D, high enough for a truck to drive under. I don't know if any of you had that. Most people usually think they can crawl under it, maybe walk, but it is actually high enough for a truck to drive under. The last problem before you begin your homework tonight is you are looking at this last in some of our story problems that we're gonna see. And as you do the story problems, it's really important that you kind of look at the picture and again, how high are you above the water when you're flying on this? So if we are looking at that, we are gonna start it with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We are gonna put 200, that's our a down here, squared plus b squared equals 300 squared. And what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video and have everyone do this work on their calculators, squaring, subtracting, taking the square roots, and then I'll put my answer up for you to take back. Here is the answer that you should have had. Hopefully you guys had the work to go with it. Again, you can pause the video so that everyone can see this and take a look. And as you are doing your homework tonight, as you do the problems, again, I am looking for that you have the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Show all your steps as we did in our notes. Be really careful that you are showing the correct work as you do the problems. When you get over to this problem, I am looking at what did you do wrong? So look at the work that they did and you are asked to explain what they did wrong and fix it. Here you're going to have some problems with decimals. And again, if there's not enough room for you to show your work, please do it on another sheet of paper. And then this last one is talking about the volleyball net. And it's asking, how long should our pole be? So you need to think, are we finding A, B, or C as we look at that problem? The very last problem, again, is looking at a story situation. And you're trying to find how tall the utility pole is. So is that our A, B, or C? Good luck with the assignment, and um, we'll check it over when I on tomorrow.